Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me again on this podcast and in today's episode, we're going to talk about a cool framework that you should consider if you want to increase engagement with your executives at your accounts. This program is something that not every company is doing, but should probably consider if you have enterprise accounts and a high touch model. So if you're in a product led strategy with not too many strategic key accounts, this might not be for you, but if you want to continue and listen to this anyways, you're welcome to stay in and hear all about it so that you can do it too in your own organization. I have a very special guest today. Her name is Andrea Galvez, and she actually had an honorable mention in the 2023 customer success excellence awards. In EMEA, she did that because she's just like an amazing executive, she knows how to implement customer success from scratch and get to tremendous results very, very quickly. She has a lot of experience. Her background is so diverse from marketing and sales to customer success. And I think that's what makes her such a Swiss knife. And she can kind of like pull framework from different things she's done in the past, create some innovative things in her own organization. But today we're just going to focus on the executive sponsorship program and what the heck does that mean? How to establish it, mistakes you should avoid. Andrea, welcome to the show. I'm excited to be here. You made me sound so good. I love it. Thank you. You're such an accomplished executive. You've done a lot of different things in your professional career. And one of the things that you mentioned to me is that the executive sponsorship program has made a difference in previous organizations that you worked with. So before we dive into that, maybe you could just double click a little bit and tell me about the organization that you're currently working for. What kind of clients do you work with? I'm currently at a startup, an early stage startup called LionEyes.ai. We're an all-in-one AI platform for marketers to run their influencing marketing strategy. And so we typically sell into marketing executives, and then we also do some small business owners and their marketing teams. That is relatively new. I've been here about three months and I'm just loving it. New challenge. Prior to Lion Eyes, I was at the Financial Health Network, which is a mission oriented organization that sells into Fortune 500 financial institutions and large employers. And so that is actually the place where I put in practice the executive sponsorship program. You've worked in different organizations. What is the main thing that this program helps solve? Like, what are the challenges that we're sometimes seeing when this program does not exist? Certainly churn is a big one here. If you're seeing large enterprise organizations churn, that's a big sign, particularly strategic accounts. And one of the things how Swift organizational strategy is changing right now, especially post COVID. So this is a big solver for that. If you're not staying in lockstep with your customers, this is a strategy you'll wanna put in place. I honestly think that if you have strategic accounts, this program is going to create lift across your entire CS platform and, and process. Okay. So what do you mean create a lift in your CS program and processes? We all have our KPIs that we're measuring against. So obviously NR is a big one is at the top, but you're probably also managing against your CSAT or your NPS or your usage rate, or maybe you have a different engagement score that you're using internally, your health score, which was like all the big rage. I think people are still trying to put that in place. Your executive accounts, your key accounts funnel into every one of those KPIs. And so if you are struggling in those, putting an executive sponsorship program in place is could be a driver of lift across any of those KPIs. So when I say lift, I mean increase, improvement. If you had to explain it to your mom, how would you explain an executive sponsorship program. So what this does, it identifies your key accounts and then it puts a plan in place for those as a collective versus just individual accounts. So everybody knows who your strategic accounts are, or I hope you do, and hopefully you've put staffing against them. Maybe you've put your most skilled enterprise senior enterprise CSM against them. What this does is pair your CSM with other executives across your team and provides parity 
for your clients. And so it's a way of managing that group of customers all together. You work a lot with SMBs, but let's pretend that your current organization would have worked with large companies like, I don't know, Coca-Cola and Nike. In those organizations, there's very high level executives and those don't expect to interact with the CSM. So the way that I understand what you were just saying is that A, take your most senior CSMs so that first of all, age-wise, it makes sense. Secondly, that's not enough. You need to create an executive parity. So if your executive sponsor for this enterprise account is the CMO, then the parity is your CMO or VP marketing or CEO if the organization is really small. Yes? Exactly. And this is actually that pairing is a little bit more art than science because you'll find that you only have a certain number of people internally and you'll have a lot of accounts. And then you might decide, oh, I have too many strategic accounts. We have to go back and cut down that list. Your CEO will probably get involved in this as well. And in fact, at my, my last organization, we had a training where our CEO came in and she called herself the chief relationship officer. This is part of their job as being at the head of the company to engage with their most important clients. So it could be anybody in your executive suite who is a similar role or a similar responsibility, at least level as the person who is owning the ultimate decision maker on the other side. Okay. So it's like a peer to peer relationship. How does it all start and what is the executive to executive ratio? So meaning you will take potentially all of the relevant executives, the ELT, as we call it, like executive leadership team within your company. And you say, you know what? Each one of you is going to be like the CRO of your own customer base. How large is their customer base that they need to make sure is healthy, renewing all the KPIs that the CSM gets? They should be getting, because if they do their executive sponsorship program right, there should be an upsell, less churn, more engagement, referrals. So one, how many accounts do they get each? It depends on how bought in you are as an organization, what strategic priorities you have as a current organization. But I like to keep this under five. I mean, these are executives. They have a lot of other things going on in their life. And if you manage a portfolio larger than that, something is going to fall through, which means depending on how many executives you want to have in the program, that caps out the total number of strategic accounts you can have in your executive sponsorship program. So you have to choose carefully. Is it top echelon from a revenue perspective? Or if you have like too many in there, who do you pick? So it's not necessarily the ones you're getting the most revenue from today. It is the most strategic investment. So who are the customers who, even if they're a smallish customer today, but they're highly aligned, they're a power user, they are also their own organization strategy is growing. Like maybe they're a rocket ship, like they're small today, but you just know it. They're going to be a unicorn. You want to start working them and start partnering, building relationships with them today to be along their journey as they grow. And so this actually takes some work. So what I typically do is create a criteria for inclusion in executive sponsorship program. And that's going to depend on your organizational priorities. But I would say overall revenue today absolutely is one of them. Key logos. If you were to lose this logo, would that be damaging from a reputation standpoint? And then potential. And then Literally, I just rate all of my customers on a scale of one to five on those three criteria and see which ones come to the top. Take that to your executive team and let them weigh in. There's usually some discussion at that point, like, oh, not this one, but this one. No, not this one, but this one. And then you finalize it from there. Okay. So I'm almost hearing that you have some sort of a committee. You bringing all the accounts you think might be eligible or make sense to include. You bringing like some scores to each based on certain criteria, and then you have a discussion. Who should we include? Let's talk about account assignments. Do they get to pick their own accounts? No, they don't get to pick their own accounts. They should absolutely weigh in on the ones that they care about. If your CEO was involved in a sale and an early customer, absolutely, they should be involved in that 
that relationship. But you want to make sure there's parity and equity across. And some executives will take on more than is realistic. And so you'll want to guide them into select the accounts that are actually going to be best fit. So I had a big, strong no there. Of course, as anything in executive leadership, it is always a negotiation. You're going to decide together, but I would not advise that you just say, okay, pick. All right. I got my accounts. I am the CMO. I got five accounts. What am I expected to do? What is the cadence that is typically expected of me? Who should I be contacting when? Is it something that I do on my own? Somebody sets it up for me. Is it just one-on-one calls or am I also attending other things? So how I typically set the tone is on an annual cadence and we have an annual kickoff where all the executive sponsors get in the room for 25 minutes and we go over what is expected of them. Typical expectations look like, and you'll want to adjust this for your organization, but they should be joining at least the QBRs or at least some sort of quarterly touch base with the meeting with the client. Typically as a group, you're going to want to have one-on-one touch points on the cadence that is agreed to with the client. So if your CMO is talking to another CMO, they might decide they want to touch base twice a year. Great. As long as that's like decided and then they should be doing it in partnership with their CSM. So whomever is assigned to the account, the CSM is the ultimate owner of the relationship and should introduce the executive sponsor if they don't already in the relationship and then should be helping that executive be successful. So briefing them, keeping them engaged, tagging them in your CRM or your CS platform, making sure they can see visibility into the relationship. So they're bringing value when they do engage. I got my accounts. The first thing that's going to happen is it almost sounds like every beginning of the year, I might get different accounts. That's not ideal, but if there's change in the organization or if sometimes it's a good break point, like especially the last couple of years, a lot of people have been moving jobs. So that is a moment where you can like reassess your assignments. Like if your key contact, your executive sponsor on your account side left, like they went to a different job that might be a moment where you reassign or if you change up the list. Otherwise it's a multi-year expected relationship, but regardless, once a year, the executive of CS sets up a meeting to reorient on expectations for the year for the executive sponsors within our own internal organization. If the executive receives any new accounts, the CSM will introduce them to their peer in the account itself via email and then schedule a call between the two, at which point the executive sponsor is expected to align with their counterpart on how many meetings are they going to have one-on-one per year and should they schedule those in advance ideally? Ideally, but you know, executive schedules are masterful. And so it might not always work out that way, but I would at least get a commitment in terms of the next touch point. Just a schedule, like maybe the next or talk about when is the next and then have your EA reach out like a few yeah. weeks prior to when we said the next is going to be. So we got the intro, we got the call to set up the cadence and just be friendly and get to know each other, see what they're all about, ask some questions. And then it sounds like, between that call and their next one-on-one call, the CSM might invite them to a QBR. In between, they will also update them, tag them on anything important that they should be aware of, and even maybe pull them in ad hoc if there's any kind of like need for an executive intervention where they think that the executive can have the right influence in addition to what they're doing with the account. Exactly. And I would say this is helpful from a CSM perspective, because often there are these escalations that they're not quite sure what to do with, or they think, oh, I can do it on my own. But if you create this early partnership or this like true partnership, then it's natural for me to escalate this thing because it's joint responsibility. I had a presentation with VMware at uh, the TSW. That's a conference that's organized by TSIA once or twice a year. And the guy presented with, he actually showcased a dashboard that shows for every executive sponsor internally in VMware, 
how well are they doing with their own accounts? Yes. From your perspective, what KPIs have you seen work well for this program? So just assess if you were to compare between executives that have accounts, how well are they doing? Same thing that as we do for CSM, right? It is very similar to CSMs. So one step that we kind of skipped over that is super important in terms of KPI and measurement is setting goals. And this is also the annual cadence where they will set individual account-based goals. So that'll be upsell, cross-sell goals, and also typically customer satisfaction goals that your executive is also held accountable for. I have set up my dashboards for my CSM and my executive sponsors in the same dashboard. And so it just shows one on top and one on the bottom. If you're in a company that allows for that level of visibility, that makes it easier. And then I would say the other thing I highly recommend you do is you do quarterly touch bases with this team where you report out the progress to goal for the year. And then you'll want to have separate deep dives into accounts, typically either quarterly or at least biannually, where you are bringing in everybody who touches that relationship and the CEO and talking about where are we at to our strategy and what needs to change in between. So those are some ways that you can hold executives accountable. And then they should have this written into their performance goals. Yeah. Part of their performance goals. So things to encourage accountability and change management is introduce those KPIs into their performance goals. The KPIs that you should include, for example, upsell, CSAT, customer engagement, if they're in the client advisory board, attendance, like all those things, whatever we want, we can include there. It should be similar to what a CSM does. Create a dashboard. And then what I'm hearing you say is like, hey, listen, if you want to create momentum, create almost like an internal QBR where you set the executive up and then dive into each of his accounts, like maybe once a quarter, come up with goals, objectives, things he should be aware of and harness their power to get the most out of their influence on the other executive if possible and their relationship, obviously. Exactly. Anything else that we didn't touch on? Maybe like an enrollment conversation to set it up. You said, well, not every company is into this kind of thing. And sometimes you set it up and the executives are not fully enrolled in it. So it sometimes is a little tough to set it up. So the risks for this program and how do you mitigate it? First of all, you have to have a customer focused culture. And if you don't have that, you might have executives who say, why am I doing this? This is not my day job. Here are my KPIs that I measured against. Why are you adding one more? And so... That is change management that would have to have internally and or you would have to have buy-in from the very top. Your CEO level would have to say this is a priority and this is the time we're going to dedicate to it and we're going to include it in our performance goals, for instance. So also just the higher you go, the busier people are. And so if this is the seventh thing on your executive's to-do list or responsibility and they feel like, oh, I have a CSM who's supporting me. I don't have to do this can get left behind. It can get overlooked or deprioritized. So that's why that cadence is super important in bringing them together and reminding them and a little bit of peer pressure of like, here's everybody else, how they're doing, building relationships between that executive and your CSM. And that could be hard at some point organizations, depending on how hierarchy you are, your level of formality versus informality and culture. Like how do you make that seem like a partnership instead of like a boss relationship is something that from a CS executive standpoint, you're going to be wanting to think about. And that kickoff call is super important because that's your point. I don't invite CSM to that. It's just the executive's this is the place where they like shout out their concerns. If this is a no-go, like what's on your mind, what would keep you from being successful and getting alignment early on? That way your CSMs aren't ending up taking the brunt. All right, everyone, if you watch this video, you learned something new, you got inspired, you learned how to tweak your existing sponsorship executive program or had an aha moment as to why it doesn't work so well and like got some tips on how to improve it, 
give this video a like. If you need help building these programs, making your customer success program more successful, increasing your monthly retention revenues, I eat these problems for breakfast and I would love to help you. So reach out to us at csmpractice.com. And with that, Andrea, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was super fun. Yeah, likewise. And I'll see you at the next episode.